Welcome to the 10 Can Boxing Podcast. My name is Cyril Lehung. Let's talk boxing. talk about the light flyweight division you know it's one of those weight divisions which has quality among south african fighters great south african fighters and fighting that 108 pound division but first let's talk international scene you know in the early hours of wednesday i was up again watching a top rank show it's headlined by the fight between oscar valdez and jason velez Valdez did what he had to do. He stopped Velez in the 10th round. Can't fault him there. But I also can't say that it was a kind of performance that will scare the top fighters in the division. But he did enough, you know. And the word is he'll, he wants to fight Miguel Burchelt next. That should be a good one. From an African point of view, it was great seeing Isaac Dogbe back in the ring after the beating he took from Emmanuel Navarrete last year. Dogbe came in in the ring with his new trainer, Barry Hunter, and he dominated Chris Avalos. Stopped him in the eighth round. So quality performance. But I have to say this. I, you know, I have to admit, I was one of those people who wondered what kind of condition Dogbe would be in after the second fight against Navarrete last year. He took a serious beating, a beating which was unnecessary because the fight should have been stopped earlier. But, you know, he came in, he came back on Wednesday morning, well, Tuesday in the U.S., and he fought, well, without his father, Paul, in the corner, of course, with his new trainer, Hunter, and he did his thing, and, you know, he looked good, stopping Avalos in the eighth round. Quality performance. What had excited me about that night, also, was Edgar Belanga. He scored his 14th, 14th first round knockout. This guy's something else. I mean, he's a huge puncher. And has never seen the second round. He doesn't know what the second round sounds like. I mean, it's still early in his career. And one day he will have to face tough opposition. But I enjoy watching him, you know. He does his thing. Very short fight. And then he kept it off with doing push-ups in the ring after his fight. <laughs> Check it out on YouTube if you can. That was my Wednesday morning. Later that day came the big announcement from Showtime with them giving the schedule for the second half of the year. I know for most of us, 2020 has been a really shit year. Yes, it's been a shit year. But the announcement put a smile on my face. They have shows that start on the 1st of August with Stephen Fulton taking on Angelo Leo for the vacant WBO junior featherweight strap. If you're a boxing fan that has been living under a rock for the past few days, I urge you to go have a look at the schedule that they've got. All the fights that are li- they've got lined up, exciting stuff. The one that really sticks out for me is the September 26th show where you have both Charlos in action. Jamal takes on Sergei Derevyachenko, who, if you remember, gave Gennady Golovkin all kinds of problems last year. Well, the two of them square off for, the, for Jamal's WBC middleweight crown. While Jamal, he takes on Jason Rosaro to unify the 154 division. These are fights I look at and think proper 50-50 bouts. Exciting stuff. I want to see this. Now, as promised, let's talk the 108-pound division. South Africa is blessed. South Africa is blessed in the 108-pound division. Talent, I mean, it's there. Heki Butler, Kosinati Joy, Steven Nonchinga, DJ Creel are all amongst the rankings in the four major sanctioning bodies. Creel was supposed to have his title shot against Felix Alvarado earlier this year, but then, you know... COVID cancel shows. Yep, 
one of the reasons we've had such a terrible year. But I spoke to Creel, and this is what he said. Yes, my fight with Felix Alvarado is still on, apparently. You know, I mean, my, I am the mandatory challenger. I think it's just now up to Golden Boy to put the show back up, and then the fight will be on. Um, before my event was happening, where I was fighting Felix Alvarado, there was an event before that. It was with Virgil Ortiz versus Samuel Vargas. And uh, that show is being put on at the end of this month. They're fighting. That event is happening. So hopefully in the near future, it's going to be us again. You know, uh, That was on a Sergei Kovalev undercard. Um, that was the show I was going to be on. And uh, yeah, like I said, hopefully that's going to be in the near future. I'm hoping before the end of this year. It's ironic that I spoke to DJ Creel and my friend Hayden Jones at SA Boxing Talk had a chat with Nonchinga who spoke about a possible fight against Creel. Trust me, Hayden and I did not plan this together. DJ Creel did talk about the possibility of facing Nonchinga or one of the other South Africans, Butler and Joy. Oh yes, of course. If, if, um, if anything, if those fights can be made and it's worth it, then yes, I'll fight any of those guys anytime. The thing is, is that um, now my plan is for to beat Felix Alvarado. That's like my main goal right now. And um, after I beat him, I'd love to unify in the division because I know Golden Boy has another fighter named Alwyn Soto at the same division. And then, to be honest, from there, my plan is, like, even if I don't get a unification bout, I'd like to move up again, you know. So, um, you know, I'm growing. Uh, I'm, I'm picking up weight. So... I don't want to. I don't want to struggle. I don't want to struggle to make weight in any of the fights, you know. So my plan is like to fight another two more times in this division and then move up again. Um, my my plan. I'd love to unify. That that's what I want. So yeah, let's see what happens. It will be interesting to see how it all plays out. Are we going to see an all South African world title unification sometime soon? I think if it was to happen, it would be amongst these guys, you know, the 108-pounders. But let's wait and see. Well, that is all we have time for in this episode of the 10 Count Boxing Podcast. Please let me know in the comment section who you would like to hear from and what you think of the new show. You can also hit me up on Twitter at Cyril Tepo, Facebook Cyril Tepo Lehung, or the Toe to Toe page. I'm also on Instagram as Lehung Cyril Tepo. Until the next episode... Stay safe.